Hello, all prophetic people that are watching us on YouTube, teaching six-minute segments on dreams, discussing it not long from now. We will be interviewing people that are very gifted in interpreting dreams or that are great dreamers. So, it seems there are people that tell me, Ed, uh, I don't get any dreams. Uh, was there something wrong with me? Well, we know in Numbers that 12 that God actually said to Aaron and, and to the sister of Moses and Miriam, He said, if there's a prophet amongst you, I speak to him in dreams and visions. Not so with Moses. So if there's a prophet, God does communicate. His commune and his ability to speak to us comes in visions and dreams. But we won't talk about visions now. Let's just talk about dreams. That's what this topic's about. So everybody dreams. Everybody dreams. That's what we are told at the dream centers, that when they monitor people through the night, they are dreaming uh, maybe for... Um, few minutes at a time or even a few seconds but it's an entire story it's incredible how fast it goes and how real it feels everybody dreams and there's different causes of it and when in the next segment I want to talk about the cause of some of those uh, anxiety dreams and lamentations I want to actually study it a little more into depth but here today I want to tell you well why am I not dreaming why not well you actually are dreaming the one that you're not remembering is closest to the waking period and often if you ignore your dreams, if God has been speaking to you in dreams and you dismiss them as crazy, foolish, idiotic, because sometimes they are so symbolic and so out there and so science fiction-y that we don't get it. Can you imagine Nebuchadnezzar who is a king? He's not a very spiritual man, but he dreams about a statue of all these different materials right down to the clay feet. He must have puzzled, puzzled, although he had asked God clearly about his kingdom. How do you relate a, a statue to the future of his kingdom. So God will speak in symbolisms. Obviously, they had a lot of statues in those days. But to prepare your spirit to be receptive to dreams. And you need to, first of all, open your faith and your heart to it. The reason is, Romans 12 verse 6 says that we prophesy according to the measure of faith. So faith and prophetic things are directly linked. Now, if you understand that if you're going to get a word from the Lord, you need a vision and a dream, your dream comes when you're sleeping. You don't need faith to dream, but you need to prepare your spirit. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 16, and I was and reading from uh, the verse uh, 9, During the night Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him. And coming over to Macedonia to help us, after Paul in verse 10 had seen the vision, we got ready to once leave for Macedonia. Now, first of all, I want to discuss quickly this briefly. It was at night time. It was late. They'd already had a resistance in, in moving in certain places, but they had a difficulty hearing from God, and it was only at night time that Paul had, it seemed, late at night, maybe right before he's falling asleep. They called it a vision. Some places called it a dream, a, a different interpretation, but he had an impression of the Lord. It seems to me there's a preparation of your spirit that you must have before you go to sleep that could become receptive, like asking the Lord for a dream. Ask God to speak to you. Don't dismiss your dreams. Pay attention. They're like God knocking on your door, inviting you to come and explore and meditate, pursue, and fathom, unravel this dream that God can speak to you and you can pursue Him. He's very keen for you to do that. For you to stir up those dreams again if you have somehow dispatch them, stop them, cause them to not happen. Just pray and ask God to give you dreams again, as He does, or awaken you in your dreams, or to stir it up, or help you remember the dreams that He gives you, that He can speak to you. You can ask Him again, Lord, speak to me in the dream. I need to speak to me. He can speak to you any way He wants to, but open yourself up and let the Lord work to you. I do recommend you make a habit when you feel the dreams impressed upon your spirit to write it down. Do not dismiss it as strange and foolish. We would love to hear your comments. Down below, we'd like you to like us. We'd like you to subscribe. Ring that bell. It helps us a whole lot in this channel, and we will be really moving on this thing a whole lot more. Tell your friends about this channel, and send in your questions to email on our website, propheticlife.com. Email us or ask it even in the comment below. We do appreciate you and we want to help you all we can because God does speak and sometimes we can hear God so clearly in those dreams and depending on which position or how God uses you because if you're a king, God will speak to you about the future of the nation or the people. If you are a Pontius Pilate's wife, he'll speak to you in a dream about her husband. You'll use your position, your gifting, your faith, your anointing. All these things will contribute to the way that God will speak to you. Dreams are very important. 
You don't need faith to dream. You don't even have to be a believer to hear from God in dreams because God loves us and we are spirit and our spirits are totally open to that arena. The doctors tell me that the gray matter is inexplicable. They don't know what it does. They know different parts of the brain have different functions, but the actual gray matter, nobody can actually explain. And so that's a mystery and we believe it's our soul, where our soul is situated and those dreams come into that area. This is Ed Trout from Prophetic Life. We want you to explore our our app and download it from the app store and our website we do love you write us write us whenever you can comment we are here to serve you god bless you